episode 43, I wanted to go ahead and just do some extra deep dives. I call them the bonus bonus. And I, I would recommend trying them on your own first, seeing how far you get, and then coming and taking a look at these videos. So if we look at number one, we've got a study of more than 3,000 baseball games. We're given a graph with relative frequencies. All right, and they define our variable right here to be the runs scored per game by the home team. And you see that right here on the x-axis. All right, so our variable in this case, and at least leading into this, this is a discrete numerical variable. And this is the type of problem where basically the table was given. You don't have to make your own table. And you might be saying, what do you mean the table was given? All I see is a histogram. Well, if I made a table, and I'm not gonna write the whole thing out, but you can see my sample space is from zero all the way up to 10, and my probabilities are listed, right? This is 0 0.05, this is 0 0.10, all the way up to here to 0 0.03. So you do have a table given to you, and this would be basically a chapter four type problem. So this is just going back a little ways. And I ask, hey, how do you find the mean, median, and mode, not mode, excuse me, and standard deviation? And this, again, we would go back to our trait table, and we would see that we would need to put our sample space into L1, our probabilities, or our relative frequencies into L2, and do one bar stats, L1, L2. So let me write one bar stats, L1, comma, L2. And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do it on the calculator app, so if I take a look here, I actually did already put all of those numbers into the calculator app. If you have the physical calculator, you can go put it in there. And then I'm gonna do stat calc option one. I'm gonna go L1 comma L2. And you can see there's my mean of 4.27. There's my standard deviation and there's my median. And I'm gonna write those up on the problem. So let me head back to my notes. And let's go ahead and do this. And I will use proper units, but I know that the mean was 4.27. I know that the median was four, and I know that the standard deviation was 2.56. Now the units on this are the units of your variable, right? So the average game, home team scored 4.27 runs, the median was four runs, and the standard deviation was 2.56 runs. All right, and between the median, oops, between the mean and median is the one that is greater what was expected. Well, let's take a look that the mean was higher and I would argue that is expected because if you look at the shape of this graph, you would tell me, I hope, that this was skewed right. And whenever a graph is skewed right, the mean is greater than the median. So is this what is expected? Yes, the graph is skewed right. And we expect the mean to be greater than the median. All right, so there we go. So as I look at the next question, it says, what is the probability? So I see my buzzword here of probability that in four randomly selected games, the home team is shut out, scores no runs in at least one of those games. So my variable has changed here. I wanna be clear that my variable now is the number of times that the home team is shut out. and it's technically in a sample of four games. Now keep in mind, if you're playing four games, you can get shut out in none of those games, one of those games, two, three, four of those games. So I can almost start to hear a tree diagram, like I'm shut out versus I'm not shut out. So shut out, not shut out, right? Shut out, not shut out. And I could keep on going, but it would take me a while. Since this is a discrete numerical variable, and I don't want to make a table, I'm going to check for binomial. So I did have a fixed number of trials. I could say that a success was the home team being shut out. And that's only because that's what we're counting. I get that in the grander scheme, that's not a success. All right, I can say that these trials are independent because I'm taking four games at random. And what's the probability that a team is shut out? Now again, shut out means you score no runs. So let's go back up here. The likelihood that the home team scored zero runs was 0 
So since I can say yes to all three of these, I get to say that this variable for part C is binomially distributed. We've got a four here, and the probability of success any one time out is 0.05. Now this wants us to be shut out in at least one of the games. So for my probability statement, all right, we're gonna again go letter, number, uh, letter, symbol, number. All right, let me write letter, symbol, that's usually the format. Sometimes it's uh, a letter wedged between two numbers, but this time it's letter symbol number. So let me go ahead and erase this so we can see what we've got. My letter is my variable, here's X. All right, when I see at least, that means greater than or equal to. And then I wanna figure out that it's at least one game. So I'll put X is greater than or equal to one. Now keep in mind, if we were building a table, I'm not going to, but if we were building a table, I would have zero, one, two, three, and four. Those are my options. So if we start in here and we say x is greater than or equal to one, well, what values of x does that work for? It doesn't work for zero, but it does work for one, two, three, and four, right? If I look at these numbers, those values of x are greater than or equal to one. So you have a couple of options here. What you could do is you could use binomial PDF and find four PDFs and add them together. Oops, I might run out of room when we do it here. And that would be great. All right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I know that these four, and then let me get plus this one, that has to add up to 100%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the complement rule. So I'm going to say, well, this is 100% minus the probability that x is 0. Because the only one I want to boot out is that one. So I'm going to say this is 1 minus, and I only need a binomial PDF here because it's got the equal sign. And I'm going to go ahead and do 4, 0.5, and then 0. And when I crunch that on my calculator, I get about 19%. Okay? All right, and then last but not least, we're now changing again. Now we're looking at the average number of runs in 200 games. So we've even changed distributions again, right? Now we're on a sampling distribution, okay? So keep in mind, our original variable, I would say this was skewed right, all right? The mean, whoops, that enlarged, excuse me. The mean was 4.27, and the standard deviation was 2.56. Now I want to think about the sampling distribution. All right, so we know that the mean stays the same. The standard error becomes the standard deviation from the population distribution divided by the square root of the sample size. And then there's always this big question, can I put an n there? All right, and there are two ways for normality to be achieved in mean land. It's that the population distribution was normally distributed. And again, our population distribution was not normally distributed. It was skewed right, so we don't get it that way. But we do pick it up the second way. All right, our sample size is larger than 30. All right, it's 200, which is way bigger than 30. That means I can put the n here because the central limit theorem has kicked in. Okay? All right. So now let's take a look at some probability questions on the sampling distribution for proportions. All right, I, I love your book because it's free, but it doesn't have too many problems that are like this. That's why I, I wanted to supplement them. So number two says approximately 10% of the U.S. is known to have blood type B. What is the probability that between 11% and 15% of a random sample of 500 adults will have blood type B? So imagine you talk to 500 folks, right? And if it's true that 10% of the population really has blood type B, what's the likelihood that your sample would be a little higher than that, right? It could happen, right? It, it's possible. So we want to see how likely it is. What is the probability? Now, there are a bunch of proportions hanging out here. So I can automatically see I'm in prop land. All right, for each of these 500 folks, I go up to them and I'm basically asking what is their blood type? And that is a categorical variable but I, I turn that into a relative frequency or a proportion and I'm in proportion land. Okay, so I wanna break these down. You've got three proportions, two of them are statistics, one of them is a parameter, all right? And here's the parameter. And let me write P here, because this is based off of the population. And this is the number that we're gonna use to build our sampling distribution. 
We will not use these two numbers. These are our two statistics because they're going to come from our sample. We won't use these until much later in the game. All right, so what we need to do is we need to figure out what is our sampling distribution? Is it normal? All right, what's its mean and what's its standard error? We need to figure those out. So the first thing I want to do is address the normality. Can I put the in there? So let me let me work this off to the side here. There are three things you need to check. You need to check that n times p is greater than or equal to 10. You need n times 1 minus p. And you need your sample size small relative to your population. All right, so let's crunch this. n times p would give me 50, which is greater than or equal to 10. Meaning, if I had 500 folks and I went and I asked each of them their blood type, I expect about 50 successes, meaning I expect about 50 of them to have blood type B. Could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but that's what I'm expecting. So I'm gonna have at least 10 successes or I can expect at least 10 successes. So let's see how many failures we would expect. So this would be one minus 10%. And when we crunch that number, we're gonna get 450, which is also greater than or equal to 10. And if you just take note real quick, 450 and 50, they add up to 500, right? So we're saying if you talk to 500 people, again, I expect about 50 successes and 450 failures. For your sample size being small relative to your population, there's always a quick little check. You take your sample size, multiply it by 10. Because in stats, we use this 10% cutoff. And I know we're using 10% up here. This is a different 10%. This is always the rule for sample size being small relative to your population. I would get 5,000. I think it's real, real safe to assume there are more than 5,000 adults in the United States. All right, so my sample size would be small relative to my population, and this allows me to sample without replacement. So since I can check through these three things, I get to go ahead and put the capital N right here, and that's hugely important. All right, now the rules for the sampling distribution on proportions are this, that we should be centered at the population proportion and the standard error is P, one minus P over N. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, and let me highlight these, I'm gonna go ahead and take 10%, I'm gonna put it here, here, and here. All right, and I'm gonna take my sample size of 500 and plug it in here. And that's gonna build out my sampling distribution for this problem. So let's see what we got. We have P prime, we know it's normal. All right, we're gonna put 10% here. And the standard error is 10 times its complement over 500. And when you crunch that number on your calculator, you get a pretty small percentage. You get a, about a 1% standard error. Okay, so there is my sampling distribution. I'm going to use that. If I wanted to, and I won't do too much of it, I could have made a graph oh, like that. I would have had sample proportion under here. I would have had 10% here, I could have gone up three, down three, right? I would have had probability of P prime over here. That's my bell curve. But ultimately, if we go back to the question asked of us, it says, what's the probability that between 11% and 15% have blood type B? So here's our probability statement, capital P. And as I was saying in number one, it usually goes letter, symbol, number, and sometimes there's an exception. Here's the exception. This time, our letter is going to be wedged between two numbers. And here's what I mean by that. I want to go ahead and take my sample proportion and wedge it between 15%. That's not 15. Excuse me. 15% and 11%. All right. So if I head over to my axis, I want to go somewhere between, we'll put it here, 11%. And then I want to head up to something around 15%. It would be up here. So I want to find the area under this curve. And just looking at that, if I look at it, I think it's about, I would guess it's around 20% just looking at it. It's definitely less than 50. All right. So let's figure out what number this actually is. We're going to go normal CDF. And this is always the same same rollout, low, high, mean, standard deviation. So let's take a look here. If I want to go to my P prime axis, I see my low is 0.11, my high is 0.15, so let me fill those in. All 
My mean we knew was 10%, and my standard error was 0 .1, oh, 0 0.0134. There we go. And now when I crunch that number on my calculator, I get about 23%. And that's in line, right? 23% is right there with my guessing of 20%. And that's the answer to my question. All right, so if 10% of the population is really blood type B, there's about a 23% chance that my sample will have between 11% and 15% of those folks having blood type B. All right, so let's try that again, but let's try it with some real data. And this is probably gonna be the last time I, I go and I get these numbers for um, the 45th president. Because as I'm making this, we are about um, nine days away, I think, I think it's on the 20th um, from inaugurating our next president. So in October 2020, we found out that about 44% again of the U.S. All right, um, had a favorable opinion of President Trump. And then I, I went and I always check what's going on in California as compared to the rest of the nation. So in California, we had this number of 35%. Right? So this, there's a pretty big gap that's happening in there. All right, and it says, what is the probability of getting a rating of 35% or less from this ran in a random sample of size, of this size, excuse me, if the proportion in California was really 44%? So, so what I'm trying to get out here is, do Californians differ from the nation in terms of their favorability rating for President Trump? Because if the nation is at 44%, really is at 44%, how likely is it that we would be 9% under that just by chance? All right, because you can imagine if California was really at 44%, there's a chance that a sample might produce like 40% or 48% or 42 But how likely is it that we'd be that far off? Okay, so with all of that being said, let's go construct this. So we're going to assume that California has the same favorability rating as the rest of the nation. So here is our parameter. All right, and this one here, this is going to be our statistic once we get there. But let's figure out what our sampling distribution is, right? So I want to say, well, what is our sampling distribution? Is it normal? Do I get to put a P here and then find the standard error? So let's figure this out. The first thing I want to address is the normality. So we need to, again, check NP and 1 minus P and sample size small relative to population. All right, so let's let's go with this. This is 1701 times 0.44, all right? So we would crunch this and we get 784.44, which is greater than or equal to 10. So what that's saying is if I went ahead and I sampled 1,701 adults in California and the true proportion for Californians was the same as the, the nation, was at 44%, I would expect about 784 of those folks to say, yep, I approve of President Trump. And then if we take the complement, 1701 times 1 minus 0.44, we're going to get 952.56, which is also greater than or equal to 10. All right, so this is how I expect the split. Again, categorical variable, do you approve of President Trump, yes or no? All right, I'm going to turn it into a relative frequency of proportion so I can crunch these numbers. And then for sample size being small relative to population, take 1701, multiply it by 10, we're going to get 17,010, and then I'm just going to say this is going to be Californians. All right? That is definitely small relative to our population, so we can sample without replacement. So the big deal here is that on this side, oops, I erased it. I can put the N here. All right, and now we're going to go plug in these numbers, right? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take 44, and I'm going to plug it here, here, and here. And then for my sample size, I'm going to put 1701. So let's crunch this. So for my particular sampling distribution, I get the capital N. I proved that. We get 44 here. We have the square root of 44. 1 minus 44. And I'm going to divide that by 1701. And my standard error here, it's about 1%. Okay. All right. So with that, again, if I wanted to make a graph, all right, I would have P prime here. I know I would have about 44 under the peak, right? And I could basically count up by 1% each time. This would be about 0 0.45, 0 0.46, 0 0.47, right? And I could go down the other way. So we could go 0 0.43, 0 0.42, 0 0.41. So somewhere in there, okay? So let's go to this 
this last part, the last sentence or technically, I guess, question here. And it says, what is the probability of getting a rating of 35% or less if the sample size, I'm sorry, in a random sample of this size, if the true proportion was really 44%. All right, let's figure this out. Capital P, here comes my probability statement. Sample proportion of 35 or less, if that was true. Okay, well think about where 35 is on this P prime axis. It is way down here somewhere, right? And then I wanna go less than it, all right? I can't even see that far down. But basically I wanna go from negative infinity to 35%. That's gonna be my high and my low. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this with normal CDF. We're gonna go negative 1899. My high is gonna be 0.35. My mean is 0.44. And my standard deviation or standard error is about 0.01. And when you crunch this, you get zero. And that matches what I would have graphed. I see no area under that curve. So this is saying there's a 0% chance that we would see a sample proportion that we saw, right? Because we saw 35%. There's a 0% chance that that would happen if California really had a favorability rating of 44%. And basically the conclusion here that we can, we can conclude, I know that sounds funny, is that Californians feel differently than the rest of the country in terms of their favorability rating for Donald Trump. So let me just write this. Californians differ from the nation in their opinion of President Trump. And that shouldn't be too surprising, right? Technically, our state usually votes blue. And you can imagine if you went to other states, it would be over 44%. It'd be kind of fun to find a state that maybe was actually 44%, so they were right there where the national average is. But yeah, some states are above, some are below, but we are so far away that we can't be considered um, in line with the national average. We must have a 